we've only been working on this launch vehicle for about a year and a half. And within the year and a half that we've been working with this small team, we've really gotten this vehicle through a conceptual design review from a clean sheet. We've gone through preliminary design review, and now we're in the middle of critical design reviews, which is kind of our finalization of the designs and the engineering drawings are getting released. As of today, the primary structure is all designed now. It's all being manufactured and in work. The vehicle overall doesn't, it doesn't mean the whole vehicle is designed, but we're about 50% of the way through critical design reviews. It's actually the, the vast majority of the committed mass of the vehicle. The remaining work that we have is mostly secondary structures and commercial off-the-shelf hardware. The past few months of the Terran R program have been the most exciting to date. We have a huge amount of flight hardware that is now being produced and we're going to show you. We have domes that are being processed and prepared to be installed into the barrels. We have barrel sections that are being welded up from formed sheet metal. And then we have circumferential stir welding being stood up in, in short order. Flight and tent engines are being produced in-house from printing through machining, assembly. COPVs have arrived on site and are undergoing processing and testing. We have fluid systems, the assembly of our piping systems throughout the rocket that has begun. We also have a lot of the tank barrels being welded day by day and the stringers, uh, the stiffeners are being welded. The thrust structure is being assembled from its component parts uh, as we speak. Great progress is being made there. So the first vehicle is really coming together. Let's go over some of the architecture from the aft end to the fairing. The first stage on the very aft end, you'll see 13 engines, they're LOX methane and their gas generator cycle as well. Our liftoff sea level thrust is 269,000 pounds per engine. The first stage engine nozzle ratio is 25 to one. Backing thrust will be 323,000 pounds. Our main chamber pressure is around 2,500 PSIA. Mixture ratio is about 2.78. In building ANR, we draw heavily from the additive heritage of the Aon-1 engine program that we used on the Terran-1 rocket. The vast majority of ANR is built of 3D printed parts that we manufacture in-house. You know, we're, we're leveraging that experience and really scaling the, the Aon 1 engine from the Terran 1 program up to a much higher thrust capacity. Nine out of the 13 engines are gonna be gimbaled. Four of them will be fixed. And also you'll see four landing legs in their engine fairings. And the landing legs themselves, you'll see four of them with a sliding track for the upper strut. As you go further up the rocket, you'll see the methane tank on the bottom for the first stage, and then you'll see a liquid oxygen tank and four non-deployable grid fits. So both tanks on the first stage and the second stage, all the tanks actually, are gonna be made of 2195 aluminum. But for the first stage, we're gonna be using 2196 stringers, welded stringers, Z-stringers actually, welded Z-stringers for stiffening. For the first stage, we found that welded stiffeners were the most mass efficient way to achieve the required buckling we needed for that tank. The downside to welded stiffeners though, is that it adds a lot more welding and hardware into the tanks. On the second stage, we can avoid that by having the integrated ortho grid structure milled directly out of the flat aluminum panels that we get. And then the interstage will be an aluminum interstage, and the second stage will have a single vacuum engine that's also a gas generator cycle, and the fairing will be a carbon composite fairing. In its reusable configuration, Terran R will be capable of carrying 23 and a half metric tons to low earth orbit and future upgrades will allow us to carry even more mass to orbit. We're not interested in only making and developing a singular boutique rocket. The thing that really drives us is making a commercially viable product that can be produced. And I think that's a big part of the reason why uh, we're, we're willing and able to make the pivots that we are making on the manufacturing side. At Relativity, we use a hybrid manufacturing approach where we use the best of additive manufacturing and traditional manufacturing. This allows us to quickly iterate during development while also scaling quickly to meet our customers' needs. The development of a rocket always requires compromises, and there's a trade-off between cost, performance, and timelines. We are actively performing that trade across the vehicle to develop the optimal rocket over time. Ultimately, we're trying to find a sweet spot between something that's very affordable, can deliver a lot of payload to orbit, and can also be fielded in a reasonable amount of time with a high cadence as well. So there are a lot of factors that we look at, not just a single thing. We'll get more in depth into some of these trade-offs later in the video. Going back to the vehicle overview, the pressure and system will be helium. There are many trade-offs when considering what pressurization architecture you're gonna develop for your vehicle. And for us, we opted for helium, and we're gonna store that helium with COPVs inside the cryogenic repellent tanks. 
We store the helium bottles inside the liquid oxygen tank for the first stage, but on our second stage, we're actually storing them inside the methane tank. Aranar uses a combination of saturated and subcooled propellants. This gives us the best blend of performance and operational ease. Moving up the vehicle towards interstage, you'll see four perimeter tension latches, but we're gonna be pushing through the center. So we're gonna have a center pusher that is gonna be guiding the second stage nozzle through the, out of the interstage during stage separation. A lot of the magic for entry, descent, and landing happen after stage separation for the first stage. After the first stage separates, we use cold gas thrusters to flip the vehicle over and orient it for its entry burn. But while we're doing that, we're also being very careful about not letting the propellant migrate too far forward into the propellant tanks, mixing with the ullage. Once that's ready to go, we turn the engines on to slow the vehicle down, preparing it to enter the atmosphere. And the reason why we do this is we don't want it to burn up in the atmosphere because the heating environments are very high. During entry aerodynamics, we use the grid fins and the vehicle body aero to slow the vehicle down in conjunction with this thermal protection system. It enters its landing burn configuration where we look to deploy the landing legs and also finally slow the vehicle down to its final descent onto a barge. During aerodynamic re-entry, we'll rely heavily on our in-house developed thermal protection system. We're leveraging material science in that area to give us the lightest weight, highest performing material we can get while still meeting the requirements of rapid reusability. There's a lot of proprietary work that's going into that material development, but it's an area that, that I'm quite proud of as well. The other area that's going quite well is a lot of our in-house kind of homebrew GNC algorithm software and codes. We have a very strong GNC team here that has both a mixture of experience both in and outside the industry. The GNC team has developed algorithms for engine control, mid-flight guidance, and day of launch trajectory designs. Recently, our Terran R flight software teams reached orbit with our Hoodle test, and now Hiddle is also underway. We're making a tremendous amount of progress on our ascent, re-entry, and landing algorithms. Utilizing the Terran 1 guidance navigation and control heritage allows us to develop the algorithms necessary for Terran R much more quickly and efficiently. The other area that I'm really proud of for the team is just how many of our mechanisms and valves and components we design in-house and test. So for example, our thrust vector control, our engine throttle valves, a lot of the solenoid valves. These are things that, that our team is really, really doing a bang up job of designing and manufacturing and testing ourselves. There's a huge buzz about the factory. Every day new flight hardware is beginning to be produced. Flight software is being released. Test and launch infrastructure is being built and we're making great progress towards launch.